This video is about that process, rebuilding the lever action shocks on a World War II half-ton Dodge truck. Um, but anyway, that's what we're doing today in the Grunt Ironworks. We're doing the Dodge half-ton lever arm shock rebuilding. Um, Ura made in the USA. All right, so I'm gonna give a little bit of an overview of how these half-ton lever action shocks work. Um, so when you're looking at these shocks, um, when it's mounted on the vehicle like this, then um, this is your filler screw. I hope you can see it. I've already loosened it up. Um, when you fill the, these things leak a little bit. So every 3,000 miles, you're supposed to top it off. And to top it off, you just squirt uh, hydraulic fluid in here until it's level and drip, dripping out. And then you put, you just reinsert the um, filler cap. So looking at these shocks, I've already disassembled this one. This is the end cap, and you're gonna need a pipe wrench or a specialty wrench to get this off. Um, they all were on pretty tight for all the ones I did. Um, underneath here, you have a piston, which I'll show you. And then this is the gasket. This fits on here. This is a little pressure plate that fits over the gasket and then the cap okay so um you're going to want to replace the gasket with a new gasket and then um clean it all up okay so um this here the side that has this part that sticks out this is your return side of the shock okay so this is the return side, this is the compression side, all right? And the way this shock works is that there's a piston, there's a cam where the pistons move back and forth, okay? And that's controlled by this lever, okay? And then there's another piston on this side. The compression piston is slightly larger, the return piston is slightly smaller. Both pistons have a tiny hole in them that allows um, fluid to move between three compartments, okay? Outside of the piston, in between the pistons, outside of the piston, okay? And this, these three compartments are gonna be almost completely full of fluid. You're gonna have just a tiny bit of air and that's regulated by this filler cap and that air is to allow for thermal expansion of the fluid, okay? Otherwise, this is a completely full container, three containers of completely full uh, fluid. So what happens is when, um, when you hit a big bump, the lever, the axle goes up and it moves the, it moves the lever up and the piston pushes, it's basically pushes to the compression side. And the compression side's already got fluid there that's kind of passively moved um, through the, a small valve in the piston. And so there's fluid here. Well, the piston cannot travel all the way to the end. It meets resistance. And so that fluid slows the travel of the arm and that excess pressure being applied to that fluid works its way out, okay, of a valve and into the center compartment, okay? And that dampers the movement, okay? So when the piston moves back, um, because the axle is now moving back into normal position, neutral, this lever goes down the piston moves back. This increase, in, 
increases the pressure on this side and in the center. This fluid tries to move out and this fluid passively fills the reservoir on the outside of the piston, okay? Likewise, on the return stroke, okay? On the return stroke, the piston on the return side moves out, increases pressure on the fluid. That fluid works its way through this relief valve and back up into the center reservoir. Now, if you're driving along and you're just hitting minor bumps, it's, you know, and it's chattering like that, then fluid will simply shift through those valves and it'll cause a damper, but you're not gonna have the big compression movement of the fluid. So that's essentially how it works. On the return side, there's a smaller valve. All it is, is really a passive valve, you see here, with stainless plate, a spring, and a keeper. And actually, I have that backwards. And so it's like this, okay? And as that pressure increases in the center, it allows fluid to move out to um, the outside of that piston, okay? You can see on the compression side, obviously that valve is much more robust, okay? Because it's under a lot higher pressure, all right? So I've cleaned these valves up pretty good and these valves are made out of stainless steel. So, um, there's, you know, a strong possibility that you can simply clean these up and restore them. Okay. So one thing the TM cautions us against is using motor oil in these things. And I've opened several of them and I've had, I, I've had, a, they've been really gummed up and that's because the motor oil, um, over time breaks down and it starts gumming up these valves and that can cause a failure on the shock. So make sure you're using um, hydraulic oil um, or even maybe, um, uh, I, I've heard of people using transmission fluid, but basically by the TM, it should be a mineral based or a hydraulic fluid. So that's essentially how this works. These are the valve components inside. So when you take these things apart, um, what you're gonna be left with is, let me reposition the camera and I'll show you. All right, so we're looking at the valve now. This is, um, this is one of the uh, um, lever action shocks that I'm rebuilding right now. And what you see here is, um, this is the return side of, of, the, of the valve, and this is the piston. So this part here is the piston. Um, let me turn it a little bit so you can see. Right there, this spot right here is where the valve fits, okay? And you're gonna put the valve in, the spring is gonna sit on top, and then there's two little grooves right here. And those grooves are where this, this keeper cotter pin, um, or not cotter pin, but C spring is going to fit in there, okay? And that's going to hold it all in place. Okay, so when you're looking at these things, you're going to want to run it through its cycle. And I'm going to clamp this in so I can do that. Okay, so as you move the lever, you're going to see, hopefully you can see without this arm getting in the way. Here, let me turn it around. All right, so as you move it through its cycle, you can see the piston moving up and down. So once you get to this point, if you've taken the valves out, you've cleaned the valves really good, and your cylinder is nice and smooth, um, in good shape, then this is probably as far as you need to go, okay? You don't need to remove the piston at this point. 
just clean it all up really, really good. Make sure all the gum and junk is out of there. Um, put in, you know, clean the valve, put the valve back in, put the spring on top of it, put the clamp back on top of it, put a new gasket on, put the plate, and then what you're gonna wanna do is add the cap. Now, um, at that point, um, you're probably, you're done for the most part with this side. Now, if however, you open this up and this cylinder is a little bit questionable, maybe needs to be honed, then you're at this point, well, how do you get the piston out? And if you look right here, this is actually a little bit of a, this is a Welsh plug or what some people call a freeze plug. Underneath here is a screw that holds this piston to the cam. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go ahead and remove um, that piston, okay, or attempt to. Um, I'm gonna, I'm not on this one, hold on, let me, uh, I'm gonna grab a different cylinder because I do not plan on, um, I don't have to hone this particular shock. So let me grab this one so I can show you guys. And obviously looking at this one, this is gonna need a little bit of work, okay? And this one is a little bit frozen. Watch your toes. That's a good way to break a toe. Okay. So what you're gonna wanna do is just underneath this Welsh plug is a screw and you don't want to damage that screw because you want to be able to get it out so you're going to you're going to want to either um depending on how thin this is use something that you can pop a hole in but really what you needed to use is about a 3 16 drill bit and gently drill through this just until you pop a hole in there hold on on All right. Just a little Welsh plug, freeze plug. <clears throat> okay, so let's see if you can see down in there. You can see right down there the screw that holds that piston in. So we are going to attempt to get that out without tearing it up. Now this screw is not tight. There's a little bit of slack. Basically when you install the piston you're going to crank the screw down tight and then you're gonna back it off one and a half turns. And that's because when the cam moves back and forth, it's not moving exactly parallel, okay? Um, with the piston, okay? And so you need a little bit of room for the piston to move. Um, and that's why it's not all tight down in there. So let me find a screwdriver that's gonna fit good so that hopefully I don't tear this up. Okay, so this is this is the screw in there. You can see it's uh, it's pretty robust. It's got this spring on it, which acts as a tensioner, 
you're going to basically tighten this all the way down in the piston and then you're going to back it off one and a half turns and that um, that sets the piston correctly when you redo it and then um, you're going to put a new Welsh plug in. Alright, so now we have this piston. There's nothing else holding this in. So we're... Alright, so this is... Um, this is going to be my passenger side rear um, lever arm shock. Uh, got this as a spare from Andrew Lang. And I'm going to rebuild it. The one I had... The one I had was pretty bad. So I've loosened this up. We're going to open it up and do a little rebuild and I'm gonna let you guys kind of watch the process um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take the cap off and I've pre loosened these you have the cap and then you have the pressure plate that goes under the cap okay this one's actually on backwards the ridges around the edge go towards the gasket so you got ridges here on the seam there and there and that's what keeps it all in place so you got your pressure seal you've got your gasket and now I'm gonna look down in here I'll tip it so you guys can see it a little bit I'm going to dump this fluid out. So we can take a look in here. Okay, you can see the valve and everything's in there. The sides need to be polished. They're a little rough, but they feel smooth. You see all this black gum and stuff? That's from someone putting motor oil in here. So we'll have to clean that out good. And then put hydraulic fluid in there. So you don't want to put too much pressure on this case because you don't want to deform the uh, the cylinders but first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test it we're gonna make sure it cycles smoothly and that's the valve working when it, the pressure increases in the center the valve is opening so it is cycling correctly Dump the rest of this fluid out. So I can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So I'm pretty pleased all in all with this side. The condition of it. I'm not taking the piston out. If I were going to take the piston out, I'd have to take out this Welsh plug and unscrew it like I showed you guys previously. I will take the valve out and clean it. Interestingly, um, I'm pulling this out. This is, um, let me verify. Let me see where the filler plug is. Okay, so this is the compression side. So there's a K on this piston, and I saw a K on another piston. It was pretty wore off. I wasn't sure if it was a K, but evidently that is a mark for, I guess, the part. But if you look down in here, let me move this so you can see. So you can see down in there what I'm doing here. Move this light. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is there's a, the little C ring here that holds the spring and everything in place. And it looks like this. And you can kind of see it right there. So I'm going to pop that out. It sits in three grooves. And I'm just going to pop it out. But I don't want to lose anything. 
and it'll shoot out once I release it. So I'm gonna pull the spring out. You notice here on the compression side, there's, there's a spring underneath and it's kind of um, tornado shaped. The small part of the spring presses on the valve. And then right down here is the valve. Let me see if I can get it out. You, did you hear the vacuum release? Or actually, I, I, I was wrong. This is not the compression side. This is actually the return side. Okay, so on the return side, you have a smaller valve. All it is is like a little valve plate. And you can see the gum on here. So I'll clean all this stuff off. All in all, though, this valve is in great shape. And what it is is it's several layers of metal pressed together. There's a thin layer of rubber in there, and that looks like it's pretty good. And so all I'm gonna do is clean that up. Now on the compression side, this is what the valve looks like. So this is the return side. This is the compression side. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean that up real quick. I'm gonna squirt some gum out in here and Get all this little crud off there. Now I have a little brass, um, we, a little wire um, thing that I put in my drill. That's not going to scratch these parts, so I'm just going to clean all the gum out of there. Get it looking like new here. And you're supposed to rebuild these every 50,000 miles. Which I figure I'm doing a full rebuild. It's got to be at least 50,000 miles. So. All right, we're gonna cycle the cylinder down so I can basically polish the cylinder a little bit. It's pretty smooth. I can feel some slight roughness on there, but that's really probably the gunk and gum from the oil that was in here. If it was bad, you could use a little honer, a hone tool. And that pretty much smoothed it out. Okay. So what I'll do is clean out that side. We'll put the valve back in and I'll swap it over. Okay. So you can see now, um, I think you can see in there. When I cycle it, nice and smooth. I guess I need to wipe it out again here. Still got some gunk in there. All right. There we go. That's how it should look. So now I'm going to cycle it back up. So it's a little easier to work on. Again, if I needed to 
if the cylinder walls were really bad, I would take out this Welsh plug right here. Remove the screw that's in here. Underneath here is a screw under tension. And what the way you set that is you crank it down all the way until it's tight all the way and then you back it off one and a half turn. The spring keeps it from ro rotating out and holds it from uh, rotating out. That gives you a little slop in the piston and then you put a new Welsh plug in here. Uh, I believe the size for the Welsh plug is, I have some notes around here. Uh, I'll post it up. I'll post it up in the comments. Uh, what size Welsh plugging use? Uh, you can get there's a there's a Tecumseh motor, a uh, little lawnmower motor that uses the same size Welsh plugs, and I'll get you the information for that. So I'm gonna clean up this valve real quick, and so you can see I just got all I did is really take the gunk off the little uh, knob faces out that's where the spring rests on it keeps it in place um, you can see this is a little three-part piece there's a little small stainless ring in there and then there's a little thicker uh, it looks like cast aluminum but anyway this will drop right down in here on the seal on this seal lip you can see there's a flat lip there which I just got crap all over so let me clean that up But, um, so it's going to sit down just like, just like something like that once I can get it in there. Okay, so it sits flat, and then the little, the, um, retainer spring, small side down on top of the return side, side valve, and then you have your little... C retainer and that is going to sit down in here in the grooves There we go. Looks like the other spring may be caught behind it a little bit. Shit. Okay, so that's why you keep your hand over it. So all your shit don't shoot out. So there is my spring. Luckily that fell at my foot, feet. The other one shot over here. Which... Ugh. Well, luckily I have a spare. I'll find it later when I don't need it. But anyway, I have a spare. Now, you can use um, you can use a set of snap rings. You could find one that was is this size and that would work as well. This one I need to clean up. It's kind of rusty and nasty. Okay, was able to get the snap ring in there. I did have to use um, a combination of a half inch and a 916 socket. And I just slowly tapped it down in there till it set into the groove. It is there now, as you can see. And this side is done. I just need to clean up um, these end pieces real quick see if I can just save this gasket. I don't have any other gaskets at the moment. So, um, okay. So the gasket actually looks really pretty good. The plate is good. So I'm just going to clean up the end piece a little bit. 
Um, I basically took a little bit of an abrasive pad, if I can find it, and I have it laying right here. Um, and there's the other ring. But um, I just took one of these little abrasive pads and with a scissor I cut it down so that it fit the uh, inside of the cap and that way I can just clean them up real quick. That way uh, the gas, the mating surfaces are, are nice and clean. clean the threads real good here so I can get it sealed now I still have to fill it up and everything so I'm just kind of getting it clean I won't crank this on tight yet so the way this goes back together is the gasket the plate and then the cap I'll just hand tighten it for now because I still got to fill them, which I'll show you after a bit. And that side's done. So now I'm going to swap it around to this side, which is the compression side of the shock. <clears throat> And let's see what it looks like. So we got our gasket. We got our plate. See all the gum and junk on there? Get all that cleaned up. I'm gonna Cylinders feel really good, except it's just got all that junk and dirt in there. So we'll clean that up. In fact, I'll go ahead and do it now while I have some fluid in there. Too bad that don't fit. I'm just going to have to make a couple specialty tools. got to clean it out now all right so gonna cycle it up to the top here dump out all that gunky fluid clean it out
All right, so first thing I'm gonna pull this C, this little C retainer ring out. Just like the other side. And clean that up. Underneath that is, you can see the spring and on the inside is the valve. So the spring rides around the outside of the valve. Here, I'll just pull them both at the same time so you can see them. Okay. So the way this rides in there is the valve sits on there and the spring sits around it on this little stainless ring on here on this valve, okay? And then the retainer ring holds it in. So it can move open like that. This is a lightweight spring, so it doesn't take a lot of pressure in the center chamber to push this open and allow fluid to come in, okay? but it takes a lot of pressure to push it the other direction. All right, so anyway, that just needs to get cleaned up, so I'll set that over there. And then, we'll get in here and clean this piston to at least the inside. Try to get all this gum off there. Okay, so one thing, it's down there, and sometimes you gotta loosen it up. Underneath the valve is two of these little, we'll call them washers, they're extremely thin, they're like shims, okay? And those help with the seal, and they help with the valve, okay? So don't, just keep an eye on that when you take these apart, don't lose those, they need to go back underneath that valve. Again, I'm just using a brass wire uh, brush here so it won't damage the parts. And primarily, I'm just cleaning all the gunk and crud out of there um, from where this had oil in it before. These things are actually pretty durable, these shocks. Interestingly, interestingly, um, these shocks are still used today, these lever action shocks in some applications. The only reason they were discontinued by Dodge Brothers is because of cost. Because the cost of one of these lever action shocks is basically roughly the cost of four of the piston type shocks. So when you're looking at saving money, that becomes a little bit of a no-brainer. but. If you, can, if you can restore these, these are actually better than modern shocks in the way they work application. All right, so I'm gonna clean up a couple of these parts real quick, and then I'll be right back. All right, so I got all my parts here. Let me turn the camera for a second. You can see I got them all cleaned up, interestingly. Um, this has a on the compression side spring has a steel spring and um, on one of my other shocks I'm rebuilding actually has a bronze brass spring so uh, just thought, thought that was kind of interesting let me set up the camera here and we'll put this one back together so first thing you want to do is make sure that you have your two little thin metal spacers and those are going to fit right there over the inside of that valve, okay? And so we're going to drop all those in place right there. The spring right on top of it. Now you have your thin spring, and that's going to go around it. The 
it's actually also a little bit funnel shaped. You want the small side down, okay? So let me get that in there. Now we gotta put the C ring in again. That was a bitch last time, but let's see if a little easier this time. I got my sockets ready. Maybe a little more challenging in a way because I'm gonna have to get around that valve. And I'm not sure, well here, let's see if this will go around the valve. Uh-uh. Nope. Our diameter goes down and the C clamp, which I will attempt to use my new tool and set it in place here. Bam, bam, that worked. Okay. All right, it's all together. Let me give it another little shot of clean. dump all that out cycle it a few times and now cycling very nicely I don't have a new gasket I'm gonna use this one it's still in good shape the plate the ridges go towards the shock And the cap. All right, the last part of rebuilding this shock is the return valve. Um, on the side of the shock, you have this uh, basically a screw plug. And behind there is the return um, fluid valve. And that gets pretty gummed up. So you want to make sure that you clean this. Now, every one I've had to open up, I've had to use kind of liberal heat to get it to loosen up so I didn't strip the threads. And in fact, I've had to um, kind of make a special tool. And so what I did was, let me find it here. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket surgery, but Basically, what I did was I took a chisel, I took a chisel, and I ground it smooth, the width of this, this, um, the thread here on, for this, uh, screw, the slot, and that way I had, I could get enough torque on here and put a socket on here and get enough torque to be able to, um, loosen that up so when I put this back together I will definitely make sure that I put some um, anti-seize compound but you can see I've already loosened this and so uh, when you unscrew this what you get is your cap there is a washer a little seal washer like a crush washer okay and if you can see it in there the valve now the valve um, there we go and that's the valve
Okay. So you can see it's kind of like the uh, compression side piston valve. And you want to make sure you clean this really good. Now I've already cleaned this. Um, I've cheated, opened this up and cleaned these. It was really gummed up, um, but I cleaned it really good. And so now, basically, when you put this back together, it's the reverse of um, taking it apart. And there's still a little crud in there, but... Anyway. So the way it goes in is this flat top is up. So it just drops into the slot. Now, when you clean this, there's a slot channel that goes all the way back here to the return side. And, and that gets a lot of gunk and stuff. So you want to clean that really good, get some Q-tips, get down in there or some pipe cleaners and get that cleaned really good before you put it back together. You're gonna put the crush washer back in there. If you have a new one, you're gonna use it. I don't have a new one on me, and this one looks pretty good. And then you're gonna basically put the plug back in there. Um, I'm gonna grab the anti-seize. Anti-seize lubricants. I'm gonna put a little bit on here so I don't have to fight it next time next 50,000 mile overhaul all right Okay. All right. So um, we have now uh, basically completely serviced this for the 50,000 mile servicing. Um, if you're going to rebuild your vehicles, this would be the procedure you'd want to do. Now I'm going to fill, fill these up. I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing you want to do is you want to rotate You're going to want to rotate this so that the piston is down and because you're going to want to fill this up with hydraulic jack oil okay like every everything i do i make a mess so what we're going to do is we're going to start by filling this up with hydraulic jack oil. Once we do that, we're going to cycle it and start getting the air out. You want to cycle this about six to ten times. You can feel it getting tighter and tighter. You're gonna top it off again. And you can feel this getting, oh boy, it's getting tight now. And this is doing a good job of cleaning out the little bit of crud I missed. Okay. Once you get most of the air out of there, what you're going to do is put this cap back on. Gasket. Plate ridge side down. And you're going to put the cap on. And then we're going to then we're going to tighten this and flip it over. Mm.
Okay, so I, now we're gonna fill this side. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get the piston down. Again, all I'm doing right now is pumping it and getting the, getting the air out of the system without pumping the fluid out. Okay, so that's pretty much the air's out. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap back on, gasket first, and we'll tighten this down. All right, that's essentially your rebuild for this shock. So what I will do is when I, once I clean this up and put it on the vehicle, what you're gonna do, well, we can go ahead and do it here. Once you have it in position on the vehicle, Let me see. I'm going to try to set this up on here, like in the vehicle, so it's parallel. Then what you're going to do is you're going to open this. Let's do it like this. That will set. You're going to open the, the uh, refill valve, and you're going to let it drain to the natural low point of, of the hole. And that will put just enough air in the system so that... Um, to account for thermal expansion. Mm. Oh, so I don't think this is the right size. Mm. There we go. Okay. So t usually you want to do this while it's on the vehicle. I'm doing it here on, on the bench to show you. Uh, I've got this set as parallel as I can to the floor. I got my trash can underneath to collect the mess that I'm getting ready to make. And you're just going to let any excess fluid just drain down to... To the point of the lowest fill point of the hole and it is right there it is right there so uh, if I needed to add a little bit of fluid now would be the time to do it and every 3,000 miles you should be servicing this squirting a little more fluid in this service hole uh, because you will lose a little bit of fluid over time and that is that. So this one is rebuilt. So what I will do now is I'm going to rebuild the other three. And this one is going to go to the sandblaster, get the case all looking pretty, and then I'll paint it. Now I just have to redo the bushings and stuff. <laughs> 